Uh, this is a very trying moment for both me and my family. For those of you who know me, and I direct this to the people of Mombasa. I've been in this, in the political field for in excess of a decade. And throughout my life, neither myself nor any of my family members have ever crossed the line of meting any form of violence on anyone. My stand has always been there, and this is known to yourselves, that even when I go out on public platforms, my policy is a policy of never mentioning anyone, never talking vulgar, never doing anything. It's a bit shocking that it is now being deemed for public perception that both myself and my 74-year-old mother would be part and parcel of a heinous act of this magnitude. Like I said, we have never. And for those of you who know me, for those of you who know my family, for those of you who know the kind of politics that I've always preached, we have never, nor will we ever stoop that low. Power is transient. And I want to now give my version of trying to hold this for so long. Probably about a couple of weeks before the unfortunate incident that is said to have been done on this young man. I live next to my mother. My mother's house was invaded, not once, but twice. And every one of those incidences, we reported it. In the invention of my mother's house, nothing else was taken except a laptop and a mobile phone. CCTV footage were provided to the authorities. My family car was approached by armed people. A report that was made. When this unfortunate incident happened, <coughs> And when there was a video that had started circulating, it talked of words that I cannot even be able to state on my mother, on the mother of my children. The first thing that I did was speak to my family. And we, in unity, agreed we will do whatever we have always been doing. Live this to the Almighty. It is unfortunate that a sad scenario like this is now being used for political I'm more than willing to state this to the authorities. This young man has sent me personally messages in excess of 800 messages from different numbers. I have never responded to any one of those messages.
the doctor in charge at Cross General Hospital received a call from a senior politician threatening him and I only knew that this young man was not even in the hospital when the doctor actually called me to tell me that this young man is not even here and we're receiving calls of being threatened, trying to be told and coerced into writing things. Others are stating that I wish not to be able to go to the DCI. If there's anyone who wants to clear the name in this matter, it is none other than myself. The summons were to today. We were requested not to go today anymore. My CC was arrested for no other reason except the fact that he is someone who has been through me and with me in my political journey. CEC has been released, told to go back again. And this country has a history of people being coerced, people being coached to talk about things. The president himself had witnesses being coached when he was at The Hague. I want to reiterate again, as much as I feel sorry for whatever happened to this young man, the spirit of my family, will not only forgive and forget, but we let the Almighty I'm, 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 I'm truly, truly I hurt not for any other reason but my mother being dragged being abused and then now being accused together with her son just because she gave birth to me. One day, one day, we will all be looking at each other. And I really, really pray and hope that the police will get to the end of this, that we'll get to the bottom of this whole thing. And for those who probably don't know me, probably don't know what my values are, <coughs> I have passed through worse I have been abused. People have tried to physically harm me, my family, but we ever maintained our core. Cool. It isn't who we are. I have every intention of clearing our name. I have every intention of ensuring that those who are behind this form of malignment will equally be brought to book. <coughs>